In this video, I'll do a few more worked examples of naming more complex molecules. I'm just going to stick this slide in here to remind you of the prefix versions of the names of each functional group. OK, so this first one looks a bit weird, but study it carefully and you can see that there is an ester group in the middle uh, and an aldehyde on the end. Of these two, the ester has the higher priority, so it's going to dictate the name. You may need to consult your notes to remember ester naming protocols. First of all, work out which bit of the molecule originally came from the carboxylic acid. That's the part that's closest to the carbonyl group, so that's this part, and that becomes the main chain. It has four carbons, so being an ester, that ends in O8, and that gives us butanoate. Now we have the aldehyde group and the other part of the ester still to deal with. Let's do the aldehyde first. It's on the main chain, so we're going to number from the carbonyl group backwards, treating the aldehyde as a substituent. Uh, when it's a substituent, an aldehyde is called oxo, same as a ketone. So the main chain part of this molecule is going to be called 4-oxobutanoate. Okay, now the other part of the ester, the bit that used to be the alcohol, it has three carbons and we name it like a normal hydrocarbon substituent, so it's called propyl and the full name is propyl 4 oxobutanoate Okay, second example. What are the functional groups? Well, it has two carboxylic acids, one on each end, so it's going to be called a dioic acid. There are six carbons in the main chain, so that becomes hexane dioic acid. Note that like alcohols and amines, when there are two or more of them, the alkane part of the name retains its E. And this molecule also has a bunch of halogens. So the carboxylic acid groups have equal priority, so we could number from either end. But two of the three halogens are closer to the right-hand end, so we should go from there to give the lowest numbers. That gives us 3,4-dichloro and 3-bromo. Putting this all together with the bromo and chloro in alphabetical order gives us 3-bromo, 3,4-dichloro hexane dioic acid. Note that I wouldn't necessarily mark you down for calling this hexane 1,6 dioic acid, but the numbers are unnecessary. Carboxylic acid groups have to be on the end of the chain, and if there are two of them, then they must be on the two ends of the chain. So the numbering is redundant. Lastly, a bit of a tricky one to finish off with. Where to start? Well, the two functional groups, the ketone and the amine, are both on the ring. And there's also a double bond in the ring, making it an alkene. So that means the ring is going to be classified as the main chain. Now, out of our three functional groups, the ketone has the highest priority. The ring is six carbons long, and with the double bond, we would call that cyclohexene. But with the ketone group, it becomes cyclohexenone. Now, everything else is named as a substituent. First, we need to work out which way round the ring will go with our numbering. We start at the ketone, since it's the priority functional group. If we number clockwise, then we'll get the amine on number 2, the propyl on number 4, and the alkene starts on number 5. So that gives us 2, 4, 5. If we go anti-clockwise, then we get the alkene on 2, the propyl on 4, and the amine on 6. So 2, 4, 6. So the first option, 2, 4, 5, wins, lower numbers overall. So the final name is going to be 2-amino. Remember the amine group, when it's not the priority functional group, will be named as a substituent. 2-amino, 4-propyl, cyclohex, 5-ene-one. We don't have to specify that the ketone's on carbon number 1, since it is the priority functional group, and it's in a ring, so it has to be number 1.